to serving the pleasure given by La Place Saint Thomas Spire, how do we solve the? How do we find the solution? By looking at table, right? So serving. So by a look of favor. So for example, when FT FT is one, anybody remembers what was the Laplace transformation of one? Yes. How about T? So Laplace transformation of uh, TFT is minus DS TFS, right? So 1 over S square and blah, blah, blah. You can do that. And exponential minus lambda t or plus lambda t s minus 1 over s minus lambda, right? So that's the, the lookup table we have done so far. So maybe we need to do, have more table Let's do that. Laplace transformation of sine omega t, <coughs> cosine omega t. It's actually doable. So Laplace transformation of sine omega t is from zero to infinite exponential minus st sine omega t dt. So probably you have done this integral in high school. Especially that's in one of the problems in Swagi Tamsa. Right. So what you can do is you you do it use uh, integration by part for wind up and twice. So it may take maybe I don't know one page or two page. But there is a simpler way. I told you that exponential i omega t is cosine omega t plus i sine omega t. Of course, i is square root of minus 1. <coughs> so this, is a, this, is, this formula is named Euler's formula. And then you can regard this whole thing. Uh, this is a lambda. Then Laplace transformation of exponential i omega t is, is a Laplace transformation of cosine omega t plus i sine omega t can be written as a Laplace transformation of cosine omega t plus i because linear operator so we can separate cosine and sine and we put out i in front of it but from the lookup table, 
this is actually S minus I omega, 1 over S minus I omega, right? This is came from this fact. 1 over S minus lambda. So lambda was I omega. And you can actually S minus I omega, S plus I omega, S plus I omega is equal to S plus I omega, S square plus omega square. So if we t compare this, we have uh, more space here. So this part actually corresponding to this. So we can actually obtain the Laplace transformation of the sine and cosine omega t from Euler's formula without actually doing the integration part twice. So Laplace transformation of cosine omega t is S. S, S square plus omega square. Sine omega t, omega S square plus omega square. And for this part, I may have uh, some space here. Three. S plus I omega, S minus I omega is S square plus I omega S minus I omega S plus I minus I omega square. So this cancels each other, and I square is minus 1, so minus I square is 1. So the whole thing is S square plus omega square, right? So we obtained at least uh, Laplace transformation of sine and cosine. And I guess you need time for that. Can I move on, or you still need time? And today seems to be like low attendance. So in five minutes, I'm going to lock the door and just have a surprise bit. If you like to let your friends know, we have five minutes. So we will start 25. Actually, five minutes is 24. So 11, 24, we are going to lock the door. <laughs> And then have a surprise quiz for five points. <coughs> what else? I should use blue.
you need step functions like that. So u t minus a one zero. You probably have seen this in the oscilloscope. Have you ever done any electronic experimental class with the oscilloscope? Then you might have seen this kind of uh, waveform. So the Laplace transformation of u t minus a is interesting. Yeah, according to the definition of this, so u t minus a is 1 when t is greater than a, or 0 when t is less than a. And assuming that a is positive, then you can write down this way, a to infinite exponential minus s t t t. Three more minutes. A infinite. So actually s exponential minus a s. How about this? F t minus a, u t minus a. One of the application is uh, you shift the function by a. So this is uh, infinite to in s t f t minus a. U T minus A T T. So maybe we have to separate this. <coughs> A exponential minus S T F T minus A T T. And you can set t minus a as u so by substitution change of variable. And so then it becomes 0 to infinite exponential minus s. t becomes u plus a, f u t u. So this is exponential minus a s. Fs. So, for example, and then we got more in this time. Minus a s f s. So, for example, Laplace transformation of sine pi t is what? Remember that the table we just covered about twenty minutes ago. I guess you are lucky. Now it's twenty-four. Let's lock, lock the door. 뒤에 문 잠그세요.
1 plus 1 equal in binary addition. Isn't pop. I'll give you, say, 10 points. It's a little bit difficult problem, so. And you have to write down the question, Eugene Pop. Eugene Pop helps that. Binary addition. So. With two minutes will be enough? With 26, 28, two minutes. So anybody who needs more time, raise your hand. So. OK, I will write the answer. It's 1, 0, right? <laughs> it's a binary addition. So actually, you have a total score, U score, the surprise quiz is counted only in the nominator, not in the denominator. Okay, more paper. Please unlock the door. So anyone who comes through the door after this minute, uh, it's all done for them. So let's continue the discussion. So Laplace transformation of sine pi omega t will was uh, according to the definition as square plus pi square of pi, right? How about when f t is sine pi t u t minus 2. It's a bit tricky, right? Because we know the Laplace transformation of f t minus a u t minus a. We know. But this form is a bit different. So we can write down this actually sign pi t minus 2 pi u t minus 2. It's same, right? If you plus or minus 2 pi from the original argument, it doesn't change. So it becomes 
sine pi t minus 2 u t minus 2. So now we can apply this formula. So Laplace transformation of ft is what? Exponential minus pi s times pi over s squared plus pi squared. Another function of interest. That by and so this is two. So exponential Gaussian function. Exponential minus a t square Gaussian. So, anybody heard uh, seen this function before? Maybe in high school, Jeonggyu Bunpo. So, Gaussian integral is actually infinite to infinite. to pi of a, that's called Gaussian integral. Okay. So anyone who has seen this Gaussian integral, raise your hand. Or if it is your first time, raise your hand. So most of you have never seen this Gaussian integral. So. Let's try to see this, set i as this function. So in order to derive Gaussian integral, we start with this i, minus infinity, infinity a x squared dx or minus a y squared dy. It's just a dummy variable, mm -hmm. integration integral var integration variable. So it doesn't matter whether it's x or y or t, right? It's just dummy. So we can put as a, a square i square. x square plus y square is rho square, <coughs> and dx dy is rho d rho d phi. Probably have learned this polar integral in freshman, right? <coughs> no? Even in high school, actually in terms of there is a, to the end of uh, integral, there is a polar integral. So you can change it into a polar coordinate, so phi is tangent, arctangent, y over x. Then we can change this into 0 to infinite, 0 to 2 pi, a rho square, rho d rho d phi. So change into polar
So you probably have this run this polar coordinate in freshman calculus, right? So anybody remembers polar coordinate raise your hand? One. So still because some of you remember that you have learned that. So if you don't remember then maybe go back to your freshman uh Mizakunak chat and just look up for the, the section. So, so maybe I can move on. Mm -hmm. Rho square. So I square. <coughs> I square is zero to infinite, zero to two pi, exponential minus. A rho square, rho d rho, d phi. So we can actually do the, the phi integral first because there is no dependence on phi and density point. So it becomes 2 pi rho square, rho d rho. So we can set rho square as u, then t u becomes 2 rho d rho, right? So rho d rho is 1 over 2 d u. By substitution, so it becomes uh, pi a u t u. So it's pi over a over minus a over exponential minus a u zero to infinite pi over a. Right. So that is i square. As a result, i is square root of pi of a. So this this is Gaussian integral is very important. A t square t t square is pi of a. It's called Gaussian integral. So this is very important. This Gaussian integral is actually related to a uh, given for normal distribution. <coughs> so let's try to find out the Can I move on for a new time? Back to the net part. T square. So T square minus ST, right? T. T 
square plus a over t t t. plus 2a over s square right minus 4a square over s square dt plus 2a over s square plus 4a square over s square dt but this s square can be moved out so this is 4a square over s square exponential minus t plus 2a s over square dt and this is actually one half over pi over a. It's Gaussian. So this is uh, a a square s square over pi over a. So Gaussian is an interesting function. But maybe a bit difficult, so I'll put this Gaussian out for. So since we have, we seem to have uh, enough table, so let's try to solve the differential equations. Can I move up? Still need time. So can I move on? We have to go. Okay, so typical example of Laplace transformation for final example. How about this? So actually, you can change this pi minus 2, ut minus 2, and OK. So democracy, I would like to choose the coefficient. Definitely, I like to put y0 as a 0. It will be more easier, right? And let's say y prime 0 is also 0. Good choice. Then you don't have to worry about v. 
So Laplace transformation of d t square d square y is s square y s minus s y zero minus y prime zero is simply s square y s right because the initial condition says y zero is equal to zero and y prime zero is zero so I treat it a little bit and T T D Y is S Y S minus Y zero S Y S, right? So the the Laplace transformation of a total equation is S square three S plus two Y S and this is simply exponential minus pi S S square plus pi square plus pi, right? So y of s is s square 3s plus 2 pi square exponential minus pi s pi. So we are going to have a delayed response, I think. So minus pi s is in front of everything. So we have s plus 1, s plus 2, s squared plus pi squared over f. So let's call this as some gs. So what we do? You can find out using partial fraction, 부분분수. So Can I move on? Yes. Oh, no, no, this is 2, right? I, I think I made a mistake. This is not pi, this is 2. This is 2, right? A is. So GS pi s plus one s plus two s square pi square. So I'm going to use s plus one over a, s plus two over b, s square plus pi square over Cs plus D. So this is actually S plus pi i, S minus pi i. So finding A, how do you do? All the other questions disappear. So for A, you multiply by S plus 1 and set s equal to minus 1, right? So, pi over s plus 2, s square plus pi square is a, s plus 2, b, s plus 1, s square plus pi square, c, s plus d, s plus 1. So set s equal to minus 1, is a equal to pi over 1 pi square plus 1, right? So it's a pi pi square plus 1. 
How about B? Same. You multiply S plus 2 everywhere and set S equal to minus 2. So pi over S plus 1, S square plus pi square is equal to A over S plus 1, S plus 2, B, S square plus pi square, C, S plus D, S plus 2. So setting S plus 2 means set S equal to minus 2 means this minus pi over S square plus 4 plus pi square equal to B. So A is pi over pi square plus 1. B is equal to minus pi over pi square plus 4. So 4 out of 2, right? Maybe you can change back to blue to red. So I will let you copy the So, let me And we already found A is pi over S square plus oh. pi square plus 1. B was minus pi, pi square plus 4, right? And since this is a S plus pi i, S minus pi i, it doesn't really matter. So we can set multiply s minus pi i everywhere and see what happens. So s plus 1, s plus 2, s plus i pi, right? Over pi is equal to s plus 1 over a s minus pi i plus s plus 2 b s minus pi i plus s plus pi i c s plus t. So if you set s equal to pi i, what happens? We have pi 1 plus pi i, 2 plus pi i, 2i pi and when s equal pi i this goes to zero right and this goes to zero too equal 2 pi i over i pi plus t c pi plus t It's a bit complicated. So, one plus pi i and two i, two pi i. Oh, luckily, this cancels each other, right? Two pi i, two pi i, they cancel each other. So, all you need to to calculate is one plus i, two plus pi i is 
2 plus i 2 pi plus pi i minus pi square right let me check this part we have to be careful so this is a 2 2 pi i pi i minus pi i square so it's 2 minus pi i no 2 minus pi square plus 3 pi i, this denominator. So, um, I, I, I'm not sure if I remember everything. So pi, so I, I need one more page. And I forgot how to make a copy and paste, so it's a 2 minus pi square plus 3 pi i. Okay. So, 2 minus pi square plus 3 pi i, right? Pi is i pi c plus d. A was right. Okay. Uh, was pi. 2 minus pi square plus 3 pi i is equal to i pi c plus t. Oh, ho, ho, ho. So, maybe you can put this way. 2 minus pi square plus 3 pi i. 2 minus pi square minus 3 pi i. Pi. 2 minus pi square minus 3 pi i. Is equal to 2 minus pi square square. 9 pi square. And pi times 2 minus pi square minus 3 pi square i. Maybe you can simplify the denominator. So 4 minus 4 pi square plus pi to the 4 plus 9 pi square. Pi 2 minus pi square, 3 pi square i. So, 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 4 plus 5 pi square, pi to the fourth, pi, 2 minus pi square, minus 3 pi square i, is i pi c plus t, right? So we can actually calculate the c and d one at a time. Not one at a time, one at all. So D simply, pi 2 minus pi square, 4 plus 5 pi square, pi plus plus, and C minus 3 pi, right? 3 pi, 4, Plus five pi square, and uh, if my memory is correct, a was uh, pi divided by pi square plus one, right? Is it? And b minus pi pi square plus 4. So y s is actually exponential minus pi s, right? Plus pi, pi square plus 1, s plus 1, minus pi, 
pi squared plus 4 s plus 2 minus 3 pi 4 plus 5 square pi square s square plus pi square over s that's c right and t was this 2 minus pi square 4 plus 5 pi square plus 5 4 s square pi square plus pi so let me see pi. This is two, not pi. So, do we have uh, enough space for S minus So, for example, exponential minus 2S 1 over S plus 1 becomes exponential minus T minus 2 U T minus 2, right? Exponential minus 2s, s plus 1 is basically exponential t minus pi pi 2 t minus 2. This is shifted in time by 2. The approximate function of this is this. So we can find the solution. This is all coefficient. Right? So let's, let's fill the coefficient. This is a C. Three pi. Check the number, right? Oh, four. And this two minus pi square. Later. So. Yt is basically exponential minus t minus 2, ut minus 2, and this is pi s square plus, uh, pi square plus 1 minus pi, pi square plus 4, exponential 2, t minus 2, ut minus 2. That's the solution. And cosine coefficient, let me check. Minus 3 pi plus 1 cosine pi t minus 2, t minus 2. Three. Plus 2 minus pi square, 4 plus 5 pi square, pi force, sine pi t minus 2, u t minus 2. So that's the solution. Oh, so how much time did it take for me to do? Half an hour, right? So I will give you homework. Design. Five sets of ODE of second order and solve by Laplace transformation. So there will be at least one Laplace transformation problem like this in the final. 
So this is about the, uh, the Laplace transformation. And before I proceed, maybe you can take a break for five minutes. minus 2분의 1의 exponential u로 바꾼 다음에 여기서 여기로 넘어가는 게좀 이해가 안 돼서 아 여기서? 네 왜냐면 로제곱 u를 로제곱 u라고 하면 du는 2배 로 du잖아 네. 그죠? 네. 로 du는 2분의 1의 du잖아 네. 
그 DU에 이거는 A U지 그냥 여기까지는 맞나? 근데 여기까지는 이해됐는데 여기서 넘어가는 건 이해가 되는데 네. 여기서 여기로 넘어가는 게 여기 로우랑 익스포넨셜 이거를 적분했는데 적분하지 않았죠? 적분한 거 아닌가? 아직은 적분 안 했죠. 근데 이거 없어진 거 아니야? 아 로우 하나만 있어야지. 어, 근데 여기 이렇게 써져. D5. Y. Y랑 혹시 어떤 그 옆에 뭐지? 각도랑 거리랑 음. 어, 폴라가 어떻게 안 되겠어요? 극좌표? 아 극좌표 Y 로 이거 d 5거든 이건 E5가 그래서 나온 거지 적분에 E5가 d 5 적분했어 아 그럼 먼저 이 파이 접근 먼저 하고 음, 그럼 디파이 되고 그죠? 네 그렇죠. 아, 음. A가 틀렸어. 아. 이게 아마 접근인데 이게 아마 이런줄에 파이 네스 그냥 A 접근이라 A 그죠? 지수에 있는 거지 그냥. 예. 여기서 그럼 익스포넨셜 있는 거잖아요. 예, 더해진 거니까 익스포넨셜 나가는 거지 그냥. 아 이거 지수에 있는 게 아니라. 어, 지수에 있는 건데. 네. 익스포넨셜 지수인데 이거는 적분이랑 상관없이 적분 나갈 수 있잖아요. 네. 이것만 적분이면 이거는 그냥 뭐지 저, 저, 가우시안 적분의 네. 반이라고 생각할 수 있죠. 네네네. 네, 네. 그러면은 이게 나갈 때. 이거는 이게 아니라 이거지 이에. 아. 아, 이 A는 그럼 여기부터 A 제곱. 네, 거기서 나온 거니까 이에 붙어 있어요. 아, A 제곱. 네, 감사합니다. 그러면 여기도 익스포넨셜로 써야 돼. 네, 그렇지. 익스포넨셜 써야 돼. 수에 있는 거잖아요. 이게 익스포넨셜이 있어야지. 아, 그렇죠. 네. 나지. 내 노트가 틀렸나? 그러면 이거 곱하기 이게. 그렇지. 그럼 이게 잘못된 건가요? 그러니까 이렇게 돼야 되는 거지. 생각에 4가 되고 a가 되고 2고 여기 2분의 1. 네. 
So let's move on to the next topic, which is probably the last topic for this semester. And so actually, I spent some time, but I will cover at the reluctance examination. There are many different candidates. But I decided to cover the Fourier transformation. It may be easier to treat this after we cover the Laplace transformation. And the Fourier transformation has many, many, many use. It's called the Fourier transformation. And the inverse transformation is defined as D omega. Inverse Fourier transformation. But before I st st we study a Fourier transformation, let's study one more function. For the direct function. This is a very strange function. T is not zero, it is zero. And furthermore, when integration is one. So it is two. This property one, this property two. Find as infinite when t equal to zero, and when t is not equal to zero, it's zero. And however, when you integrate it, it's one. Very strange, right? So, anybody heard about direct delta function? Raise your hand. <coughs> okay. One student knows it already. So interesting property is uh, ft delta t dt if we multiply by ft by delta t and then integrate from minus infinity to infinity, then delta function has a meaning only when t equal to zero, right? So same as this. Mm. 
Oops. So according to this definition, delta t is defined as uh, infinite when t is equal to zero, and zero when t is not equal to zero, but integral group is the one. So f t delta t dt the same as f zero, because delta t is non-zero only when t is equal to zero. So, and then we can move this out. And because this integral is 1, we have f0. Can I move on? Another possibility is, is uh, f t prime delta t prime minus t t t. So delta t prime minus t is same as this, infinite zero. T prime is T, T prime is different T, right? So this is T, T prime. So same as before, this delta function is non-zero only when T prime is equal to T. So we can change this into FT, delta T prime minus T, T, T prime. And since integration over t prime, we can move this ft out of the integral. <coughs> ft delta t minus t, t t prime. And of course, this is 1. This delta function is when you integrate it over minus infinity, infinity is always 1. So this becomes uh, Ft. Very interesting, right? So it's a very useful formula that you need to remember that <coughs> Ft prime delta t prime minus t, t t prime is Ft. So this is a useful formula. So I guess the delta function is a very abstract function that satisfies very interesting properties. But is there any specific formula for delta function? You can ask question. Is there any specific form of delta function? You can ask the following question. And the answer is yes. This is delta function. So let's see. So if this statement is true, so let's. So I like to give you a specific form, form of a delta function after I define the delta properties of delta function. So this is the delta function. And let's see if that's true. So let's study this first. Check this first. So 
this is uh, i t exponential i omega l. Uh, no, no, no. I T L minus exponential minus I T L, right? So that is T over twice over sine T L. So let's GLT two pi over minus L over L exponential I omega T T omega is pi over one T <coughs> sine T L. So let's multiply by L and L. Same, right? So this is LT sine LT L over pi. And let's study this function. So when T goes to zero, what happens? LT over sine LT goes to one, right? And when sine <coughs> LT is zero, T is L of pi, L over plus minus pi, plus minus two pi, right? So, so we can draw this function like this. Pi over L minus pi over L, 2 pi over L, minus 2 pi over L. Height is L over pi. So this function is something like this. So this height is pi, and this is uh, 2 pi over L. So what is this area? This area? Height is L over pi times width is uh, 2 pi over L and 1 half is 1, right? So this this area is one, and now if L goes to infinity, what happens? When L becomes very large, then it becomes something like this. When L is when L becomes very large, then this height becomes infinite, right? How about this width? Two pi divided by L goes to zero. So this width becomes zero, height becomes infinite, but area stays one. So this is a good candidate of a delta function. So we we just have seen that. So L goes to infinite, 1 over 2 pi t omega. So this is basically 2 pi omega minus infinity to infinite exponential minus i omega to d omega. This is a good candidate, good delta function, actually. So area. Is one as L goes to
I think I may be going a little too fast, but so I will let you copy and digest and put them here. So there is a delta function actually with this, right? Not just a hypothetical function, but in more specific form of a function. So let's see. So let's go back to the original definition and And see what happens. Then one over two pi exponential i omega t f omega t omega. And see what happens. Two pi. Exponential i omega t, say f t prime, exponential minus i omega t prime, t omega t, t prime, t t prime, t omega. So you can change the order. F t prime, one over two pi, exponential i omega t minus omega t prime, t omega, t t prime. T minus T prime, T omega, T T prime. But we have just seen that this is what? This is uh, delta T minus T prime, right? So it is nothing but FT. So from the definition, from the Fourier transformation, you can actually found the original function by the inverse transformation. So that's consistent with the definition of inverse with the knowledge of delta function. Right. I may be going a little bit too fast. I think I okay, so this is our Fourier transformation. Then F T can be achieved using inverse transformation. So 
maybe, for example, when ft is given by 1, this is ft. This is one example. Then, Fourier transformation is minus 1 to 1, exponential minus i omega t, 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 right? So, minus i omega, exponential minus i omega, minus exponential i omega. So, i omega, exponential i omega minus is uh, twice over omega sine omega. Cosine omega plus i sine omega. That's a uh, Euler's formula. Exponential minus omega is uh, cosine omega minus i sine omega. So from this, exponential i omega minus, minus i omega is 2 over i sine omega. So omega sine omega is actually 2i over exponential i omega minus, minus i omega. So this formula is useful. Transformation of the Gaussian. We found that the Fourier transform of Laplace Gaussian, the Laplace transformation of Gaussian, was not Gaussian, right? How about this case? So let's just check the Gaussian and Be patient, maybe 20 or more minutes. <coughs> then you can have a, you can enjoy your lunch. So when Ft, I don't know. I like blue, but always start with something different. A t square, and see what happens. So. The Fourier transformation is minus infinity to infinity exponential minus i omega t exponential minus a t square t t. Exponential minus a t square plus a over i omega t, right? A T plus A two A square minus four A square uh, yes I square square T T So that is exponential minus 4a omega square, exponential minus a t plus 2a i omega square t t. So set this u, then infinity plus 2a over i omega is infinite, right? You can add whatever to infinity to the infinite. 
So it becomes exponential minus 4a omega square a u square du and two. So that is exponential minus four a omega square over pi over a. So f. Times pi over a or pi over a so very important properties Fourier transformation over Gaussian function is a Gaussian function. And we will study the properties of this Gaussian function maybe next week. So I'm thinking about stopping here today. What do you think? Good. Okay.